And you're on the air with Kelly Pavlik and James Dominguez and The Punchline. It's really The Punchline <clears throat> with Kelly Pavlik and James Dominguez. But today is going to hopefully be a fun day, maybe, unless some asshole of ours friend ruined it. Thank but you, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby Sanchez, for fucking us over. I was excited as shit to get here until James told me that one of our buddies was dying to get a fight with Charlie Z. And called him for 24 hours straight. Called him 24 hours straight, and uh, he may have changed his number. We're hoping he blocked. But uh, fucking Bobby Chan said, Dirty Sanchez. Jeez. Um, let me get set up here on this, too, so I can see. Uh, What's going on? Let's see. Um, yeah, here. Yeah, get to yeah, I'm so for a second. we're you know this we got uh, Terry Moss. We're gonna be is that it? yeah yeah Terry Moss, Terry uh, Moss, former straw weight female straw weight champion, three time and straw weight champion is now a trainer and, and doing a big thing down in Atlanta with uh, Buckhead the boxing the Buckhead uh, boxing gym yeah Buckhead putting on shows amateur shows and and pro. And I think what we're more curious about is the state of boxing from the point of view of a woman trainer things like that yeah a little bit different you know. Um, I think boxing is more of a sport to where we everybody's getting more involved now. It's not not just a man right. sport; it's more of everybody sport. So I've been saying that too. I was actually just talking to somebody at my uh, gym, and uh, it was a, a female, and I was she was talking about boxing, and she wants to learn. And I said, you know, it could be big again. Yeah, I mean, it's getting it's getting coming back a little bit, but all it takes is one or two or three of these top women to come up. And for them to get more TV time, and then that's what's going to get the following. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a trend. Like, with anything, it's a trend. trend. Yep. And you know the thing is, right now, I think women's boxing might be at its best right now since the 90s when you have a few different stars out. We yeah. have, um, you know, you, you got the girl from Aust or from England or Ireland. You got the Irish girl and um, uh, Clarissa Shields and the German girl. Yeah, we already got Ricky Fudges on here. Uh, sup, homies. Um. Uh, he goes. She goes. Oh, what happened? Uh, Ricky goes. Where you got? Where's your guys' ten goose boxing shirts? Oh, they, they must have got lost in the mail two years ago. Ricky, yeah, when you're supposed to send them. Yeah, they, yeah, they were the ones that weren't shipped. <laughs> he goes. Oh, he said he wants to fight you too. He does. Yeah. Tell him I'm not Sal. I'll kick his fucking ass. He said he's not Sal Garcia. He said he'll kick your ass. <laughs> Damon's on. Um. Yeah, Damon and Ricky, you, you know, your fucking buddy Bobby Sanchez, right? As of right now, we don't want to say too much without it being true, but he may have ruined the interview today. Um, but what other fights are, do we want to uh, touch on? Well, I mean, we have Errol Spence and Lamont Peterson next weekend. Yep. That's a big one. That is. Um, you got Anthony Mundine, Tommy Brown coming up um, on the 17th. Robert Easter, Fortuna. Mm -hmm. That'd be a good Not one. Justin Javier. Uh, Marcus Brown. Anthony Peterson. Um, there are a lot of good fights coming up, you know? Yeah. Well, we tap on the uh, Spence one, though. Uh, I think Spence, as I said before, is the top guy at Walter Waite. Yes. And, uh, but Peterson's not an easy fight for anybody, man. Peterson, Peterson's a, a sneaky fighter, and he's yeah. tough. Yeah. You know, I, we were talking yesterday. I, I, I don't remember exactly. I think it was one of Paige or something. I said, oh, I know I was talking to Damon, actually, Damon Martinez. And I was telling da uh, Damon, Lamont Peterson's best opportunity for this fight is to jump on Errol Spence early because Errol is not the quickest of starters. No. And that was, I said he's like a fucking diesel engine. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, love you too, Ricky. Yeah, no, I mean. He's uh, like a diesel engine. Once that motherfucker warms up, it's curtains for you. But get him early. Try to take him out early. If not, you don't have a chance. He's 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 huge and he's strong. He's powerful. He does everything good, nothing great. You know what I mean? I, that now that's what I'm. I agree with you on that. And um, yeah, you get a guy that big, that talented, he's gonna get stronger as the fight goes on. Yeah. You know, as we're saying. Um, but you know, Peterson, man, he's he's just a rugged, a rugged guy, a fighter. Yes. Know, experienced everything. Yes. But and he's experienced, and that's yeah. Rick, Rick, you're my number one fan. I'll send you a T-shirt. My when I send you a T-shirt, it'll get there. It will get there. Um, 
Yeah, it's gonna be inter- it's gonna be uh, an exciting fight though. I, it truly is. I, you know, and it, it breaks it up. It's the first real fight this year. Cause I mean, we've been I watched that Showtime fight last week and it was fucking shitty. Yeah. Uh, the Clarissa Shields fight. Wasn't that was the shooter one that you also got in trouble for uh, saying something that I hated? Yeah, that I don't like her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got some people blowing up the YouTube thing. Let's talk about Charlie Z shit. There's a, a guy whose username's Charlie Z Troll TV. But I'll tell you what we can do, guys, today. If we can't get a hold of Charlie Z, we're going to post his phone number for you all. And, <laughs> and, and a treat from here. I'm going to post his address for you, his home address. Or anybody want to talk to him or, or take him up on his offer, it's there. How the hell did you get his home address? I told you I can get anything, didn't I? I mean, I can get a lot of shit, too, but that helps us even better, man. It makes a hell of a team. Yeah. Bro, I even have his, his code to get into his apartment complex. You do? I do. That would be fucking fun. We should just go in there, get pillowcases and fill them full of the bars. Soap and beat the <laughs> shit out of him, fucking hillbilly. No, but I mean, so right. Bobby. I mean, I I don't know. Like, um... What the fuck Google says everybody already knows Charlie's address. What's that? The username's what the fuck Google. But uh, he, he says everybody already knows Charlie's address. But nobody went there and beat his ass? Nobody, everybody, everybody talked about no one showing up. I think Charlie's fucked himself by calling out Fernando because Fernando's like one of those people that you don't call out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he called out Roger, which is another person you don't call out. Yeah. Roger, I don't even think he cares too much, though. He cared enough. Did you see the videos? Mm-hmm. He's like, you're fucking dead. <laughs> my favorite thing, though, here's my favorite thing of the whole the whole bit, is Charlie's so fucking stupid, he heard Fernando Vargas' his little brother was threatening him. So who does he think Fernando's little brother is? Jesse Vargas. So he <laughs> yeah, gets on true. his video, and he's like, fucking Jesse Vargas has been threatening to beat me up. <laughs> I, I'm going to go kick Jesse Vargas' ass. So he, poor Jesse Vargas is sitting in class. Yeah, you can imagine that one. Fucking! <laughs> I told Roger, I said you should fucking go kill Charlie Z, fucking and then they'd go arrest Jesse Vargas for it, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> fucking, his, Jesse Vargas would be standing there minding his own fucking business, all these fucking SWAT teams pull up on him, <laughs> fucking arrest him. <laughs> You're going to jail for fucking assault. <laughs> I didn't do shit, man. I was just, just buying a can of Pepsi. Hey, Charlie Z pointed you out, said you were the one that beat his ass. Oh man, that's funny. So I mean, what do you? I mean, how? What do you think on Errol and Lamont? How do you think that's gonna go? We're not wrong very often, but no, I, I definitely think Errol's gonna win the fight. I think mid rounds. I have a mid round stoppage. Yeah, but I mean, it, uh, Peterson's gonna come to fight though. He always does. Yeah, I mean, it, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun. I think you know, as when I say that, because of yeah. how Peterson fights. But yeah, you know, again, Spence is the best fighter in that weight class right now. He's just and he's he's just a, a Big guy in that weight class yeah. who, who's sharp, who got all the skills, and um, I see Spence winning that fight. What about Robert that. Easter versus Javier Fortuna? I like Easter. Oh man, Easter's got a couple gifts, and Fortuna's a good fighter. Yeah, no, I, I know that, Fortuna. but yeah. uh, Fortuna, right? Yours ain't Fortuna. It is. It was for, yeah, it's, no, it's Fortuna. You got more of an A in yours. It is Fortuna. It is Fortuna. Yeah, <laughs> I think yeah, Javier Fortuna's cute. You might want to go get that uh, ancestry dot com. Maybe it's, maybe it's, maybe you're like it said Argentinian. Got, it said I got two percent Persian in it. I was like, oh. you probably do. Yeah. You probably do. I got I got the Islam Jihad haircut going too. I got my, I got my beard out. I got a short. And there's a lot of good. fights. There's a lot of fights here. I just don't know how much attention we were going to give to some fucking fights. Our, our producer was sick there for a while, guys, and he, he just he's all faded up now. It's like a new him since he got healthy. Yeah, it is. He looked. Yeah. He we thought he was dead. Yeah, yeah. He's we, look. He's looking slick over here. Yeah, we got uh, Lucas Matisse versus Tewa Kiram for the WBA title. For what? For one of the dozen well, WBA Lucas titles. Lucas Matisse. I, I don't know much about the opponent though. Yeah, I mean, I can't Lucas lie. good. Jorge Linares and Marcito Gesta, another good fight. Uh. You got that one coming up. John Rambo said, I'm waiting for Crawford at 147. Bro. Crawford, no. Crawford. I, I have, and I have said this, I, you know, I just said it again the other day, the other night with Delhi Setback on the yeah. interview. 
I said, it's not an argument. I can't, I'm not going to fight no more with anybody that wants to put Crawford at number one in the pound for pound. Who I got number one is who I got, and it's not a you know, and it's one of them type things where, where it's not a fucking crazy to put Crawford number one in the pound for pound at all. You no. know, actually, I, I have him too. But again, going on that, I think Earl Spence is the best one forty seven pounder. Yeah. So, and a lot of people that a lot of people that have Crawford number one don't think Crawford could beat Spence though, and he's in the same weight class. That's why I keep going on. How can you have somebody? Number one, pound for pound, that's not the best in her weight class. True. That you don't think is, you know, so. Um, what about uh, Mikey Garcia, Sergey Lip- Sergey Lipinets? That's that's gonna be fun. That's on the that's on the tenth in San Antonio. We have uh, two of our correspondents going out for that, right? Yes. We have uh, Christina uh, Lopez from uh, Fight Talk. She's gonna she's gonna cover that for us from Fight Talk. Another good show, guys. You want to keep up on. And we have Alicia Taylor. If she can remember where San Antonio's at. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We love Alicia. We just like yeah. to fuck with her. But she's gonna, they're going to be covering the event for Fucking us. Damon Martinez will show her where it's at. Damon Martinez is only going to show him about three feet below his waist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he showed two inches, three feet below the waist. <laughs> um, we got Josito Lopez and Hector Munoz. Not even a fight. Josito's going to kick Hector's ass. Um, Bartholomew fighting, and I don't know it's kind of a weak card on that Mikey card. It's a pretty fucking weak card, man. Yeah, but sometimes when you think that, man, sometimes them turn out to be the best undercards. Look at this one: uh, Birdshot versus Christian Mijares. That's a good fight. Birdshot versus Christian Mijares. That's fucking gonna be a good fight. We should try to give our boy a call. Go ahead, we'll give him a call. All right, guys. We're gonna try and do this. Well, I know somebody's fucked it up for us, but we'll go check <laughs> Damn. Who the fuck? Who, who's he screaming? He must be saying "fuck you" to Alicia Taylor or something. Who's that? Dan Martinez. Why? I don't know. He just put "fuck you" real big. If I said "us, fuck you," he's probably he's probably fighting with her already. All right, let's try this. Bear with. Ah, oh, here we go. Who's jumped a bunch of weight classes, right? Johnson. Uh, Told you. I'm going to send him a text. I'm telling you, we'll get this kid. I swear to God, one of you guys fucking ruined it. You'll never get a phone number. You won't even get a phone number to a fucking bail bondsman. Uh, Crawford, uh, Crawford's a big guy, John. He can carry that weight. Crawford is what every bit of five eight, five nine, isn't he? And wide, he's a wide shouldered guy. He can carry that weight. So, and he still carries that power. He still carries one punch knockout power at his weight. So, I don't think the weight, the, the weights. Hurt. I don't think forty seven is going to hurt him that bad. What was that? They're saying uh, John Rambo's saying Crawford's moving up weight too quick. A big guy. He's pretty tall. He's small frame, but he's a but big tall. Guy. He's still a wide shoulder guy. He can uh, carry forty seven. Uh, he's small frame. He ain't gonna have wide shoulders. Uh, I don't know, man. I I don't think he's ready at this stage. For, I mean, I, well, he's ready for one forty seven, but man, that's a fucking load of weight class for a lot of guys that are naturally been sitting at that weight class that could fight. So, well, there's a lot of guys at forty seven that's not big, um, too. I mean, you got some guys at forty seven. That aren't super big guys either. So he is a big 140. I'll agree, but I, I I really think Crawford beats a lot of these uh, second tier guys at 47 fairly easy. I think like Danny Garcia, as I do. Oh, well. I don't think I don't think the Porters. I don't. Man, you know what? And yeah, out of the, the out of that weight class, top guys right now, style wise, I think he beats up a Thurman. Well, but I don't see him beating shit. But Spence, I don't see, you know. And, and you, got Brandon, you got Brandon in there now. You got Matisse at 147. You got these other guys in there. You have the, you know. <laughs> Scotty Reaver said, I'll fight him for five of Roger Romo's homemade burritos. 
Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know what's wrong with it. You need a new case. Yeah, maybe I should take the case off. It is looking a bit beat there. Yeah. Oh, look, it's a brand new phone now. Oh, he has a brand new phone. That case. I can see clearly now the case is gone. Is it on the phone? Is the, char is the thing on? Yeah. Uh, Alicia goes, thoughts on Jam Jamel Herring going with top rank? I'm, 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 hey, I'm happy for whatever Jamel, um, uh, for J whatever Jamel decides. It's his career, and obviously Al Heyman wasn't doing a fucking job for him. Yeah. So if, if Top Rank gave him a better deal, and you know Jamel has to look out for his family, I'm all for it. I agree, and Top Rank's you know one of the better uh, promotional companies out there. Still. Top Rank will take good care of him. They so. will. They'll, they'll they'll move him. They'll move him. Paul Paul Williams could have safely did 54 or 60, I think, at a certain point. John, he was a big fucking guy. Paul Williams? He was like a little, little like a hair taller than me. He was like 6'2", right? Yeah. Again, going on that, though, just a small small frame, though. I don't he think was so. a skinny guy. I don't think so, D. I think we're, you're going to lose, uh, I think you're going to lose Pete, St. Pete, about halfway through the fight, about the fifth round. I think, I think Spence is going to put him away. You do? No, I think Spence will take him in the fifth round. I think fifth, sixth round is going to be. I, I agree with the uh, middle round. In that I point. think I think if you don't if you don't jump on Spence and hurt him in the first three, it's over. Yeah, he's I, just too big and too strong, and he gets stronger. That's what I mean. Uh, you know, in that fight, and, and Peter, uh, Billy, the fuck, a hell of a person to have on. Hey, bring him on, okay? If you want to? Fuck it. We'll keep this guy on for a minute, Billy. Hey, what's up, Ben? You're on the punchline with Kelly Pavlik and James Dominguez. <laughs> oh, boy, that's a, this is right where I want to be because I'm calling to tell you and the punchline and whoever, I expect Peterson to give Spence a hell of a fight. I'm telling you, do not fall asleep. Okay. What, what the fuck do you know, Billy? Hang on the phone. Billy Lau, <laughs> who <laughs> fought for I'm a role title and was a guy listen, who pissed me I off. Expect, I mean, he beat John Duddy. I, I think Spence Listen, listen, listen. Hold on, I was you up, asshole. Has a good chance of winning. But anybody yeah, knows Billy Billy Lau, but he fought it. Billy Lau fought everybody. He did fight everybody. We we're just looking at that, and then he and he beat. He was the first one to give John Duddy a loss. Yeah, and it pissed me the fuck off because that was the one fight that I wanted. <laughs> um, you know, Billy did it. Didn't he fight Chavez? Oh, he, he fought, well, he, boy, yeah, he fought I'm, Chavez I'm, Jr. He fought Julio Cesar Chavez. You, Cal, because it's he he might uh, he might be paralyzed if you'd have got to him first. So I'm I'm just glad that I was able to. I actually did him a favor, really. Okay, but Billy, but after now after kissing your butt and not kissing your butt, but telling him you know your resume and everything, Billy was a hell of a fighter. But now I'm gonna pick on you. Pretty much ninety nine point nine percent of every fucking fight that you picked, you were wrong on. Then this one too, Billy. You're gonna be wrong on this one. Listen, I, listen, I'm not. Here to call in and say that Peterson's gonna pull off the upset. I'm not saying that. Spence is a great fighter, and I think pound for pound, he's top five. He's Crawford's uh, definitely consensus number one, hands down. Anybody that knows two cents about boxing knows Crawford's the pound for pound best. All right, but I'm just saying I think Peterson's gonna bring out the dog in him, and I think if Billy, he's gonna, Billy, we're gonna learn more about Spence in this fight than. Hello. Who is this? This is Ricky. Oh, Ricky, what's up? What's going on? This is Kelly. Yes. What? Are you 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 are you late behind or what? What are you talking about? We're here. I'm watching you live. What the fuck? You're on the punchline, you dick. Oh, you you're like ten minutes behind then, man. What's going on? Nothing. We're we're, we're doing the show right now. Is this one yes? I'm watching you live right now, but it seems like you you guys are like, where you guys in Kentucky or what? <laughs> no, we're, we're we're north of Kentucky. <laughs> For all, everybody don't know, this is Ricky Funes, yeah, trainer of the buddy. stars. Yeah. Trained some of the bigger biggest names in boxing, Diego Crowles, Brandon Rios. Yeah, hey Ricky. Yeah, I love you guys, man. You guys, you guys. I just invited like a hundred people right now because I love your show, bro. I well, love you too, bro. Well, as as a given, homie. Hey Rick, could we call you right back in like five minutes and, and have no, you on? You Never mind. No, we want you on the show. We want you on the show, Vato. Kick Dominguez's ass, bro. 
We want you on the show. No, seriously, we're gonna call you back because we want you on the show. Call, call, call me on my cell phone. All right. What's that? This all one? Right. No, it's no, another one. All right, all right. I got it. Yeah, James got it. I will call you all back right, for guys, sure. Bye bye. All right. Let's finish this. All right, guys. Now we're with uh, Chavez opponent and John Dunny, Billy Lyle. All right. Let me Are get. Still on the phone or no. no. Calling her back. Hey, hi, Gina. Um, this phone's crazy today. We're getting people calling in. Crazy. You know Billy's wrong about his pick. Yeah, he's going to be an ass now. I'm going to answer. He's going to be mad. I don't care. Hey, I thought oh, you, uh, he cut, answered. All right, cut, good. I thought you cut the mic on me. No, no. Uh, that was uh, <laughs> trade. We, that, that was sorry. That was the trader of stars, Ricky Funyas from Ten Goose Box, and that called in. He said your pick was fucked up too. He said if Diego Krause is alive, he'd stick him on you for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, no, nah, man, I, Billy. I mean, look, I was just saying that. Uh, well, first of all, let's get to your pound for pound, dude. I'm not saying that you got to be that it's out of the question to have Crawford number one pound for pound. I have him one for, I have him number But, one. okay, but see, in my opinion, most people that have him, not everybody, but most people that have him number one pound for pound don't think that he can beat Spence. And he's in the same fucking weight class. So how can you be pound for pound number one when you're not the best in your own weight class? Oh, well, well okay. I, I, think he'll, I think he'll beat Spence. I do. I think he's in faster hands, better boxing. Tell, I mean, Spence, don't get me wrong. I think the world is a kid, and I, and I liked him the first time I saw him, and I've been talking about Spence for five years now. But I think in the first six rounds against Cal Brook, his hand speed got a little bit exposed. And I think when he goes gets in there with Crawford, with the southpaw stance and the fast hands and even a longer reach than Cal Brook, I think he's in trouble. And people, you know, Crawford will box, and he'll dance, and he'll move. But he's a dog, and he's nasty. Yeah, but Kell like Brook's a hell of a fighter, though, man. Like, he got stopped by Triple G, but he went up to middleweight I mean, to fight a big middleweight. But, but he fought I him mean, over in England. I don't know if it's. I'm not trying to make it an English thing, but the, he's just not that gritty. He's just not like he's not going to go in there. If you're going to beat Crawford, he, he's going to go out. And I, I realize he broke a bone and this and that, but like. You got guys fighting with broken jaws. I mean, Joe Smith fought with a broken jaw the whole fight against Melvin Blair. You got guys fighting with broken eye sockets. I mean, did you ever fight with a broken eye socket? <laughs> no, I never had one. You know? <laughs> but, I mean, you know, and that, you know, it, it, it's a touchy subject. You don't want to say guys should be fighting with them, but but I, at the same time, some people, it's just you know, I, I don't know. I just think that I, I just think you that. The Crawford's a whole different animal than a Kelber. I I, I, I mean, agree. I agree. I, Billy, I got him number one too, just like you do. I mean, I just I think that anybody. I, I don't think you could have number one. I think you you have to have number one. Look at the look at the. You I don't mean, have look at the to. Guys he fought, look at the guys. He actually reminds me of a young Mayweather. If you look at the guys Mayweather fought in the late nineties and early two thousand, those guys were better than the guys he fought at the end of his career. I mean, they really work. If you go down the line from the guys he fought, going from so are you gonna hop? Are you gonna be the one too that says Lomachenko's overrated after what he just did to Rigondeaux? I mean, he. I'm not saying he's overrated, but I mean, at the same time, to me, he has to beat somebody. He has to go out there. I mean, he, he beat the one kid who just lost to a completely shot Gambo. Yeah, they do. His <laughs> bet, it, he, he, he he fought Salida. <laughs> if he lost to Salida. <laughs> Right after Gamboa destroyed Salida, so the same Gamboa everybody's throwing on the bus saying he was never that good. Well, he was good enough to beat Salida before. Right yeah, before but you're talking Salida about fight. a kid's second pro fight now too, man. That like, come on, well, I mean, Billy, was you ready to fight? Was you ready to fight a Salida at your second pro fight? Was you ready to no, fight? No, I wasn't. Billy wasn't ready to fight Salida. Was fifty. You turned pro at eighteen. It's different. You turned pro at eighteen. I turned pro at eighteen. Here's a kid that turned pro after two gold medals. Well, no, with, with that age, that and, and you don't carry that. Don't, that's a totally different thing. If they would have brought him through the pro pro ranks now and, and went from four to six to eight and ten the right way, then I would say that. But obviously, I, I mean, when you're I, coming I, I from four two minute you. rounds I, I totally, and three I three minute so rounds, hold on, hold on, Billy, hold on. Here's my only point. My point is, Salida's a guy that had eleven losses when they fought, so that wasn't supposed to be the world beater. He was a guy who was supposed to be a tough, rugged guy that he was supposed to be. It wasn't like he was uh, – he wasn't another undefeated prospect. But Billy – He had 11 losses. 11 Billy, men beat him before that. But it wasn't a four, two-minute round fight in his second fight, man. It was it was his second no, pro I mean, fight. I it's a hell of a hard second fight. If you're, 40, if you're 48 years old, 
<laughs> if you're 48 years old and you're fighting and it's your second pro fight, you're still not going to be able to <clears throat> adapt to that. Salida's exactly. a fucking. My, and my, my point is, Kelly, I think, I mean, I think you put Kelly Pavlik in the second pro fight in against against a journeyman with 11 losses, and I think you beat him. And my heart, my heart, I really do. Well, well that's a given. Think, I'm just I mean, a badass. I think, but... I think Liam Inchenko has, you know, great hand speed, great coordination. Do I, do I think he's, I mean, I don't, I don't see, I just. Well, I who else does he have there's to not, beat? There's nothing I don't see. It's not but but who else does he have to? to who more. else does he have to? A, a good fighter like like Rickendall, and everybody was saying how good Rickendall was until after the no, fight. All no, of a sudden, an no. Old man. But he Billy, everybody in boxing was saying, and yeah, very few were saying, "Oh, Lomachenko is too big," and this and that. But how many more guys does? Lomachenko have to make quit in the corner after four or five rounds before he gets his respect. Lomachenko, he has to beat a legit 135. Brigandel being a two-time Olympic gold ACL, medalist. Ber- Berchall or whatever. Or Ber- whether the, I would like to see, so right now, to me, I think Mayweather's kid has a hell of a chance to beat him. I mean, Javante I Davis. Javante? But here's the problem, Javante. Billy. Here, here's the I problem. Think- Lomachenko I mean, goes in and beats out a legitimate guy when he he knocked that Puerto Rican he fought an undefeated Puerto Rican kid in his time and he knocked him out. Okay, but listen, listen, but here's here's exactly what's going to happen. Lomachenko goes in and makes Javante Davis quit after four rounds, and then you're you and and, and oh, a lot well, of other people. No, hold, hold, Billy, uh, Billy, hold on, it's And then that he's happens. going to turn around. And you're going to say Javante Davis was not ready. He was no, not ready no. for that fight. No, and I that's going to be the big it. thing. Cookie Monster is not would, ready for that fight. We got a new subscriber on YouTube. I would never say. I would never say yeah. that. He, he goes out and he beats somebody. What do you say? He goes out and beats that another top. And everybody will, and then they're going to all shut the internet down when they're wrong tomorrow or this weekend. And we have we have another new follower on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying it right. Kalon or Kalen Swanson. Okay. A, um, they want an autograph from you. I said if they private messaged their address to your the Punchline's Facebook page. We'd send yes, them we'll send them off. A, uh, former WBC champion, Paul Banky, wants to say hello and be a big fan. No, tell him I said Paul Banky, uh, Kelly said Yeah, hi. Billy. I mean, dude, it's just great, you know, and I, this is a great discussion. I mean, it's a great <laughs> argument. No, um, you won't let anyone speak. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I just got... My thing will always. When, when is he going to get his respect? You don't make. Well, it's not every day you make a rig and you go against a guy like Rigandow and not get hit. Roger said you and make tripping. him quit. <laughs> I mean, Kel, thirty-seven at one twenty-two is pretty much like fifty-three at one sixty. I mean, the little guys. You have one of the so trainers on now. Tell him. Yeah, yeah. My buddy uh, Roger Romo. He's a, a personal trainer for uh, strength and conditioning coach. For Lomachenko. He said you're tripping. He said you're tripping. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. I mean, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not taking anything with me, kid. I mean, he's sometimes the fighter, you know, I ever was. But all I'm saying is I have to see, before I put him up there with Crawford, who to me is a pound for pound, Sugar Ray Leonard, Floyd Mayweather type yeah, Billy, that's not out of the question. You know, you say you put him up there, that's the whole argument. But it's, and it's not out of question that Crawford could be number one. It's just in my opinion, I'm not going to, I'm not, I really have it. I mean, it's an argument why I think Lomachenko is number one, but well, James, James, James Dominguez right? agrees with you that, hold on, Billy, 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 hold on. James Dominguez agrees with you that Crawford is number one, but I'm not going to sit there and tell him that he's fucking hallucinating. I mean, because it's, you know what I mean? It's possible. I will it's, say Crawford's number one, but Lomachenko is a fucking very close or tied Second, you know what I mean? He's no, right there. It's Man, it's, 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 it's not it's, the way that he. It's not how he's. It's you know he's fighting. It's how he's fighting. Dude, me and Billy fought for years with this man. I don't even know how we fucking ever got every every fight that came up. We fucking fought. We'd be at the gym fighting about it. We'd be hanging out <laughs> fighting about it. I mean, we we never everybody's, seen everybody saying tell Billy to let you talk. But Billy is letting me. talk. I know he is. Yeah, uh, but. <laughs> But um, well, hey Billy, we're gonna get back with this Ricky. Hey, hey. dude, you gotta call in more often. Huh? You know, I think this might be a new thing. We're gonna give you a call. You just gotta let me talk a little bit, though. I know. I'm sorry. I was talking no. over you. You got me going. You know, I ain't been on the air for a long time. I just got a little bit, uh, got a little bit greedy with my time. Now we, we enjoy having you on. Now, I will definitely call in, but... Yeah, dude, we're gonna have you back on, man. That's it's great. I mean, to have your insight. 
A lot of people like people want to hear that from other fighters, and especially all the guys you fought and, and the experience and the knowledge you got to Did sport. He fight Camacho too. Junior? No, Camacho Senior. No, no, that was Kenny Signorini. Kenny, 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 Kenny. James Kirkland. Uh, who was that big left-handed uh, guy that fought? Uh, should I forget it? Kirkland, Martosian. Yori Boy Debbie, Campus. Yori Boy Yori Campus. Boy Campus. Uh, hey, bop, bop, bop. The, who's the kid you you got robbed with that title over in uh, uh, Europe? Dominic Bush. I, I got I lost the majority decision in Germany. Uh, Sylvester, Sebastian Sylvester on a week notice won 11 rounds on a week notice with Sylvester. Um, bop, bop, bop. Man, who the hell? Oh, Jonathan Gonzalez. That was on about two weeks notice worth of midnight. I don't know what the hell happened to that kid. Uh, he kind of fell off the face of the earth. He was like a top prospect for a while. But listen, guys, I got I got the baby crying. I got to get out. But hey, great talking to you both. You guys have a wonderful show. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. I'll call it again. Uh, yes, I love sir. you, bro. Talk we'll, to you soon. We'll get back right, with you. Later. All right. Jesus. Was the TV on itself? Yeah. Oh, it was, it was just on. My ghost. The ghost? It wasn't like that loud. Truly a haunted hang. All right. Um, are we calling Ricky back now? Oh, uh, you know what? Let's call him back after because Terry's calling in four minutes. All right. Give a shout out to a Stephen Connor. He's a watcher from Oregon. Oh, give a shout out to Stephen Connor from Oregon. He says he's an amateur middleweight from Oregon. Wow, semi pro, is it? Cool. Well, good luck with everything, man. Keep uh, keep fighting. Uh, Oregon, home, fight. of the, home of the spruce goose and trail mix. I'm working hard. Home of the and ducks. non blow jobs. <laughs> home of the ducks. The, that's not the ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what's the name? Um, oh yeah, the Oregon Ducks, right? Home of home of Steve Prefontaine. Rogers calling. Now we got Roger calling. Yeah, so go ahead and answer him. We, we have Roger Romo, trainer of Lomachenko. Calling. We still gotta call uh, Ricky back. I just want a ten goose trip. Roger. What's up, brother? All right, don't be mean. That was my homeboy, Billy Lau. I know that was your homeboy. Your homeboy sounds like he's been punched in the head too fucking much. Hey. <laughs> fucking yeah, Loma. As far as second. What the fuck? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Number one pound for pound is between Mikey, Lomachenko, uh, Crawford, and Spence. And they all have to sort each other out. Once they all fight each other, we'll have an absolute number one. Number two. I've been saying that, yeah. though. Those, all them guys in that weight class, they got to fight it out. Yeah. yeah, I think there are, there's no there's no dominant number one right now. I think, I mean, even though Lomachenko is moving up in weight and making fools quit, I mean, he doesn't get a chance to knock them out because they're so frustrated they quit. They, they know they're not going to be able to do that's, it. Well, that's, that's what I said. That's How many guys you got to you – I was trying to say this to Billy. I was trying to spin it out. How many yeah. fucking guys do you have to make quit in the corner? How how do you fight a guy? Okay, if Rigondeaux was too short, too old, or whatever, how do you still fight a guy with that skills and go just about with a whole entire fight without getting hit? How do you dominate exactly. a guy like Nicholas Walter, who really is no joke? People think, oh, he's overrated. No, he's not. That guy's yeah. a fucking exactly. monster. Exactly. You ain't got to come on here I mean, screaming at me, I, homie. I know this noise. You know, and even, I mean, even though Rigondeaux came up and wait, a lot of people were like, oh, he hits him. Man, Rigondeaux, he felt him get, he felt him hit him with that last round, and Loma looks back at him right before, well, when the round ends, he looks back and he goes, your ass is mine, you're mine. And that motherfucker, all of a sudden, his, his, his fucking hand hurt. Hey, Roger. Like, yeah. Hey, can you do me a favor? What's up? We heard that Juan Manuel Marquez is with you at the gym. Can you get him to say hi to us? <laughs> hold on, hold on. He's in the, hold on, let me see if he's, hold on. Everybody's going to get Juan Manuel Marquez for us. You got somebody that translates English to Spanish? Yeah, I will. Okay. Hold on. Juanma. Sí, sí, ¿qué pasó? Juanma, tengo unos muchachos aquí que quieren hablar contigo. Kelly Pavlik y James Dominguez tienen su propio uh, show de radio y, y quieren hacer una entrevista. Ah, pues sí, dale. ¿Qué, qué, 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 quieren, que pregun qué, qué quieren preguntar los muchachos? He said, what do you guys want to ask them? Ask them. How's your hand feeling? Dice uh, que cómo está tu mano. Bueno, pues mi mano está bien. Ya no estoy peleando. Me retiré oficialmente del boxeo y pues ya no más estoy celebrando pues mi vida y disfrutando de de todo todos todos mi todo todo mi trabajo duro en el en el cuadrilátero. How's it? He said his hand is fine and that um. 
he's in, he's in, he's re officially retired. He's enjoying his retired life. Um, he's enjoying all of his triumph and all his victory inside the uh, inside the ring. Is there any chance that he'll come back one day? Pregunta si hay chance que regreses al ring. Bueno, pues si si el dinero si el dinero está bien, chance que sí, pero a mí right, yo right. cuando digo que ya se acabó el ya se acabó el party, pues ya se acabó, tengo que What tengo que pues, ya disfrutar de, de mi retiro. He said he said if, if the money's right, maybe, but since he said it's over, it's over. He wants to enjoy his retirement. Tell him, hey, tell him thank you, Roger. Hey. And Paul Banky wanted me to tell you that you know your boxing. Hey, Paul Banky, that is, that's Roger Romo. That's Fernando Vargas' little brother and uh, one of Lomachenko's strength and conditioning coaches. He is one of the best out there in the business. Paul, Paul, Paul Banky, Paul Banky. We grew up watching Paul Banky. He used to fight in the forum, man. Yep. That's awesome, man. At Eaglewood, uh, right? And at the Olympic. Yeah, yep. Me and Fernando, yeah. We, we used to, we remember growing up watching them uh, fight at the forum and fight all kinds of places. That's a, that's, a, that's a very familiar name out here in Southern California, man. This is an honor to fucking... Yeah, uh, uh, I hear that. Tell him I say hello, man. I want to, hey, and uh, thank you, Rome. Appreciate it. Yeah, hey, thanks for coming on, homie. And, and tell Juan, thank you, too. What are you doing no right problem, now? Are you tra you no training problem. guys? You you work, you training with the guys right now? No, I'm actually working out right now. I'm going to I'm gonna be back at 4 o'clock with an hour, so I'm going to be listening to you guys. Hopefully, you guys get a hold of that idiot. All right, start putting them weights up, man. You got some catching up to do, homie. No, I ain't trying to be all big like you. I still, like, I, I still want to have abs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nah, but you you look huge. I seen you putting up three plates and some more the other day. I was like, God damn. Yeah. So I mean I can hit two plates, fifteen reps, but I'm not gonna hit three plates. I'm trying to burk a belly it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Otto. Hey, we'll talk. Thanks for coming on, man. We'll talk to you. No problem, brother. Talk yeah. to you soon. Love you though, bro. Love you guys too, brother. Alright, man. All right. Hey, this show's been a show of stars today, guys. Calling in. Everybody's calling in. Um, we Terry, let's we better call Terry up. People want you to try to call uh, uh, I got it. Hey, I know, uh, we're, we'll try to get to him. Did she call you already? Show's over at seven. Did she call you? It's already six. Yeah. Should I think she already, maybe she's trying to call and check? No. Nothing? Scroll once? Nope. Okay, well, we can try call Ricky then. Nope, she's calling. Is that, that's not her. It's made in Michigan. Maybe she has a Michigan number. No, she has a Georgia number. Six eight something. I've I've talked to her. Well, let's call. You want you want my phone for Ricky? Oh yeah, he said call his phone. Oh I'm yeah. Gonna give him a number. Okay, give me a second. I'm gonna store this in too and fucking call Ricky every night. That's what I do. I thought itchy. Dude, I was in the store the other day. And I felt something sting my leg, and I wasn't wearing underwear because I was wearing fucking sweats or whatever. And I looked, dude, and there was like a spider on my leg. It bit the fuck out of me. I was like, I thought I was, I was like, oh, oh yeah, it was bad. Um, let me um. More dip. His crabs. Nah. I just seen a video, man. Some fucking black dude was at Walmart's. It was on like the Facebook videos, like when you watch one, and it's done, it'll slide up. And there was a guy there. He was he said that's a checkout counter and he's going like this scratching and finally like after five minutes everybody's looking at him he's like damn he goes that bitch okay, got me he's screaming he's, he's walking through the store screaming you ready 818-300-5622 we are calling up Ricky Funes trainer of the stars he trained uh, Diego Corrales he trained Justin Bieber he, he yeah worked, Bieber he, reigns, he worked with Mayweather when he's in LA he um he worked with Brandon. He worked with a bunch of stars. Uh, both Ruelas brothers. Yeah. Michael Nunn. Chavez Jr. Chavez. Chavez. Yeah. Michael Nunn. Kenny Pavlik. What's going on, Ghost? You homie, we're, we're just rattling off all the guys you uh trained and, and worked. I was with. not gonna answer this. I was not gonna answer this call. I spoke to Joe Goose and I was gonna bring him to the gym right now, but you guys called me a little bit too early. <sighs> oh well, I mean that's kind of just saying. It's kind of like how I hear about these shirts all the time. They were coming, yeah, buddy. I, I just send, uh, I I never got you, to. I send you guys, I send you guys these shirts, and you guys fucking keep playing. Fucking shitting all of my shirts there. Oh, hold you on. There? Yeah. Okay. We'll call back after. So what's, that, what's happening? So what happened with Charlie? Charlie V? No, we're still gonna, we're gonna try to squeeze them in. Um, we're actually gonna. Uh, our guest is calling in right now. 
He wanted to talk to you for a minute, but we're going to try to get a hold of him. Fucking Bobby Sanchez kept fucking bothering him, and now he, and we think he changed his number. I saw him live trying to crank on him. Yeah, well, Bobby called him. Bobby called him. Bobby called him 300 fucking times. He changed his number. Changed his number. Hey, Bobby was stalking his ass. Yeah, but that's not what we needed. I told him not to do that shit. If Bobby took his much time. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie called me last year many times. He kept calling me like you guys were trying to call him right now. He says, hey, man, I want to come to the gym. I want to spar. I go, you know what, bro? If you come to my gym, we're going to play for keeps. I ain't going to play that little bullshit that you do. You suck a bunch of people. So you're fucking with the wrong dude. Yeah. Like, well, I don't play that. If you're going to spar, we're going to spar, but you ain't going to suck a bunch of me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I agree with you. Yeah, you got to keep a close eye on him. He's a now, you know me, man. I mean, I don't play those games. We're going to spar. I'll get my ass kicked or whatever, but you ain't going to suck a bunch of me. You ain't going to play those little games on me. I'll break your legs. Well, you know what? It's going to come to a point. Somebody is either you or somebody's going to fucking get him like that. I'm surprised well, he, he hasn't. You, 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 been... saw that, you saw that 16 year old kid, the black kid, choking yeah. that father, and I was like, man, that's what he needs. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And he's still the original thing he won. <laughs> yeah. Man. You want to call her? I'll call her back and take it. Yeah. Kelly, Kelly, just do what you did to Jermaine Taylor, please, bro. You want me to do it to him? <laughs> No, nah, dude, yeah, see, the way I am, though, I get, hey, Ricky, I get in trouble for, like, the kid shit. If I go in there and fucking beat up Charlie Z real bad, dude, you'll see the fucking cops, and I'll be, you know, they'll come from Youngstown. It'll be Youngstown YPD in California yeah. fucking arresting me. <laughs> hey, 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 throw James Dominguez on his ass, man. I'll yeah. whip that motherfucker's ass. Hey, Ricky, I'm going to post his address on the show at the end of the show. Man. I'm gonna post his address on the show. Is it, is it snowing over there? No, I'm just uh, <laughs> it's about 72 degrees today, Sonny. <laughs> All right, tell, tell me about this. What do you think about Mikey Garcia and Lippinets? I think Mikey. What did you guys think? What did you guys take on that fight? Mid rounds, fourth, fifth round knockout for Mikey. Yeah, Mikey too sharp. I'm not saying it, not being biased. I'm just being honest. I think Mikey's too sharp. Um. I see him dominating the fight. I, I wouldn't say mid-round stoppage, although that's a possibility, but I, I say a, that he wins the fight convincingly dominant. I, I, I think you're a good decision just because I, I know Lipinets and I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a friend and I'm a friend of, uh, of Alex Baez, uh, his manager. Yeah. Uh, but I'm a, big, I'm a big fan of Mikey Garcia. I think Mikey Garcia is going gonna, is gonna to really put hands on him, but I don't think it's going to be an easy fight for Mikey. Yeah. Yeah. Just because I, I, right. I just because I believe Lipinets is a tough Russian guy that will take punches and go to the end, you know? Yeah. But Mikey Garcia is sharp, strong. You saw what he did to his last opponent. Oh, definitely. We saw it. No, I agree with you 100, percent and he, he showed everybody. Well, should have showed everybody how good he is in that fight to be able to do that. Yeah. But um, hey, Mike or uh, Rick, I'm gonna hit you back up. We got to get a hold of our our guest. Can we call you back? Yeah, call me back if I answer. Right, I know you're busy, man, but make time for us. We're only on an hour. You got it, brother. All right, my man. She is called. All right, guys, we're going to get back to Ricky. Oh, the, the lines have been opened up today more than they have before, and they're all who's who in boxing, so it's a treat today. Hello? Terry, sorry. We Terry. Had, we no had... worries. Hey, Kelly, what's up, James? Hi. Uh, not much. You're here on the punchline. Oh, it's an honor. But yeah. I just wanted to ask, is, um, is Charles Zelenoff there? I was hoping I could talk to him. <laughs> Terry, we want you to fight Charlie Z. Yeah, we want you to whoop his ass. <laughs> Somebody said he wants to fight me, you know. Yeah. So I was out on a run and I'm jogging, you know, with my boxing hoodie on, you know, trying to look like a boxing person. And then that, that lady passed me in the, with the stroller and I was like, I better not fight. <laughs> you, you know what, Terry? We had, we had a handful of people bust our balls a little bit and pissed at we were fucking around with Charlie Z and we were trying to get him on a show because of this reason, because we have been getting blown up about having Charlie Z on the show right now. We have more YouTube subscribers just today and viewers on through YouTube, just not Facebook all because they want to hear what's going on with Charlie Z. 
And uh, well, I want to talk to him too. I want to see what he's got to say. His well, electric well, boxing for, career should should for, have made him famous long ago. That's yeah. Funny. Well, for friends of the show that don't know, this is Terry Moss. This is two time world woman champion. She's one of the she's one of the pioneers of women's boxing. If I mean, if yep. you know women's boxing, you know who Terry Moss is. Um, so I mean, she she's one of the she's one of the first superstars of the sport. I'm not trying to say you're old, Terry. You're still pretty sexy. <laughs> yes, you're giggity. Uh, no. And yeah. uh, has a, a beautiful uh, gym there in Atlanta, uh, working and with Buckhead. The, yeah, Buckhead working with hey. the youth. Got some some really uh, very very good prospects. We still haven't got a shirt from Buckhead yet either. Oh yeah, what the fuck is that? <laughs> All right. Put her in the same category as Ricky Funyuns. She's going Ricky Funyuns and no shirt come. Yep. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we got one from Virgil yeah, Ortiz. We're, we're doing yes. a lot with the gym right now. We actually have a new partner coming in. I can't say who it is, um, but I can just tell you that I've been working on this for a while, and, and they have too. But we're really excited. It's going to be a, a big name. It's well, it's a Vander Holyfield. He doesn't that, pay. But I just can't mention it. What's that? If it's a Vander Holyfield, he doesn't pay. No, it's not him. <laughs> <laughs> James still got Vaseline on his butt cheeks from Evander Holyfield being oh, mean to man, him. Oh, man, me and that was yeah, like, he, he that. called me at home. He called me at home. <laughs> right. Hey, yeah. I was talking shit about Grant, uh, Evander, right? This right. dude has balls as big as a fucking house. He calls me at home, asks me what my problem is. I'm like, who's this? He's like, Vander. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, did he call onto the show? He called. No, he called me at home. I was like, from a. Um, Ooh, oh, my gosh. From That's a number. Right there. James, well. won't, James won't be in Atlanta anytime soon with uh, the real deal looking for him. Fuck that, dude. I'll say I work for child support. He won't come near me. <laughs> <laughs> and when he does come, no one will know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Yeah, I see Evander actually a, a good better. I have around you know some of the shows in Atlanta. He, he just did his first one here, you know, not too long ago, and then he's actually been to quite a few of mine. His son has fought on a couple of my corporate shows. Yeah. So I see him around. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what do you got going on? Well, you know, like I said, we got I got a lot going on right now. Actually, um, last year was a little rough. I'm gonna admit, uh, we just had a lot of um, transitions we had to go through. A lot of different things with my gym, with the promotions. I just kicked off my first, you know, I've been promoting shows since 2010. And um, I don't know, some people may know about uh, Corporate Fight Night. It's a show I started back then. i um, been running it for now. Um, I guess it's been, um, wow, it's been quite a few years. It's been, this will be our eighth year in production. So um, you guys got to come to one of those shows, Kelly. I'm going to have to be sure to, you know, have you at the table and let you come down and um, so, um, anyway, doing that, and I've got some more things going down. I'm kicking off another one of those shows right now. Well, Terry. I'm doing two of those in Atlanta and then one in Cancun next year. Or yeah. this year, actually. Yeah. Well, Terry, we came down to the last show, and Amy had promised us and said that you said that you were going to let us sleep with the uh, the BW or the um, the Hooters girls, and that never happened. Right. So it's going to be really hard for us you, to get us back. You were going to let James sleep with the <laughs> Hooter, girl. Hooter girls. Yeah, and to clarify that. Hey, we found out that they have those to go now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think they've had them for a while. They just didn't, didn't call them Hooters Girls. <laughs> yeah, they, they have delivery, too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right, wow. Yeah, there, there were a lot of them here. They, you just had to stay a little bit later, James. You left too early. <laughs> you know what? I would. I left when the, I left when the taxi was leaving. The taxi said we got to go back to Ohio. I just got in the fucking taxi. Oh back. man, <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, you guys drove things back on the other night, side right? of the border there, dude. It was twelve hours. It was a twelve hour drive. Right, Terry. I got a question. Yeah. How has women's boxing evolved and changed since you came into the sport? And what do you think about it today? What do you think about that? Man, man, it's. A, I mean. There, it's not. It's, it's. It's. I can't even express how much it's changed. And a lot of people say, "Oh, you know, Christy Martin was hot." And I mean, I love Christy, by the way. I mean, I know her pretty well. Yeah. Um, she did our show with you guys, actually. Yeah. She's. Um, I know she's doing some promotions too. So people know her. They knew. You know, they knew Layla Ali. They knew of Ann Wolf. Me but that's John. about it. They. You know, they. I remember when Dude. the Jackie Frazier and Layla Ali fight. That was a whole horrible situation. That thing was bad for the sport. You know what I'm saying? But. The thing is, is women's boxing, when I got in, you know, I was a little bit too old to box anyway, but I got in and I was able to do it. And, you know, I'm in a very, like, I'm in the smallest weight class there is. So it was, you know, the pool wasn't deep and it was easy for me to go in like that. But, you know, now um, the amateur program is huge. You're so, a molecule weight, right? What's that? A molecule weight or neutron weight? Yeah, that, that's it. Molecule. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dust ball. <laughs> yeah, that was it. 
<laughs> but so, uh, you know, now the, the thing about it is in the amateurs, you know, it used to be wide. I mean, they had a couple of girls in every weight class, but when you got one or two girls, yeah, I mean, you know, there's just nothing there. So the competition wasn't good. You know, people complained. This is like the television. They wouldn't put them on, you know, HBO or Showtime. They would complain that the competition wasn't, you know, it was ugly fights. They look like girl fights, you know. Well, yeah. that's because there just weren't enough girls to get competition. So you had, you know, a small handful of, of women that could fight, and they were the ones getting all the notice, but the rest of them really couldn't, and they didn't get any experience, and nothing in the amateurs, nothing in the pros. In fact, when I first went in, it was commonplace for a woman just to skip the amateurs and go right into the pros because she was more likely to get a fight, which is what I did. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a real common thing. I mean, most of the girls I knew had no amateur fights, a couple of them here and there, but... You know, now it's, it's, you know, you don't dare go in without amateur experience. And um, I mean, though, I will say that in the United States, I'm not real happy about what I've seen so far um, as far as what they're doing on the competition. I, I realize that they're the Olympians, you know, meaning Marlon, Sparza, and Clarissa, they need to be built, you know, and Clarissa's getting more professional as she moves on. But I'll say that still, these are the level of fights. I mean, she just had this fight. With a 41, I mean, I like Tori Nelson. I, you know, I, I respect her, but she's 41 years old. And that and woman, she got a two-time that, gold medalist. You know, and she's 17 and 0. And that couldn't put her away. Couldn't hurt. What's that? And couldn't hurt her. She's going to get in trouble again. No. Every right. time he talks about Clarissa Shields, she's going to get in trouble. Look, I ain't got nothing bad against Clarissa. I'm just saying there's some things that she needs to fix if she really wants to be a star in this sport. It, no, takes no, it, it takes more than I'm talent. It takes more than talent any day yeah. to become a star. If that was yeah, the case, everybody would be a star. I'm not saying anything about Clarissa. Yeah. She would be right. I think what's happened is she just got stardom too early, and she didn't have time to even develop her, you know, her uh, her, her character yet. You know, no, not well, saying she's got a bad character, but I'm saying she needs to develop her. She's very. She kind of just has to grow up a little. She's bit. She's talented, know, but she's very combative. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. But that's what happens when you're a 16 year old star yeah, in boxing said, and, and grew up in Flint. <laughs> and from Flint, that's exactly what I was about. To say. Yeah, but if you um if you say anything, you know, like I made the comment one time, um, um, what's the girl's name from Ireland? Katie Taylor, right? Oh man, no doubt. Okay, um, now that's the real, that's the truth, right there. Right there, and I was like, yes. okay, we were talking women's boxing. A friend of mine was. I said, I'm a big fan of Katie Taylor's. Well, I no didn't doubt. know that Clarissa Shields was on the the page. She goes, well, I remember that when I'm holding on to my two gold medals. I'm like, whoa, mm-hmm. shit. And I was mm-hmm. like, well, I think Katie Taylor has one, too, if I want to look at it. Of course she's got one, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, okay. But not only it's that, Katie Taylor is a pro Katie soccer Taylor. player, and she's the top of that league. We already she, talked about I mean, Katie Taylor, Amy. Yeah, Katie Taylor. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, it's good for what, what they're doing with Clarissa. And, I mean, I think that probably um, even now, the Kayla Mayer side, you know, some of the other girls are getting ready to go pro from that same Olympic group. They've actually... That whole team, that whole national team, yeah. has been to my gym because in 2015 I hosted a U.S. versus China for the women's national team. I remember you brought down a mutual friend of ours that tried to sell those stupid ass bags. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> I know exactly. What that you're was like zero and five talking right. about. She was like zero and five talking about going to the Olympics. I told her not to quit yeah. her day job. Yeah, selling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Terry, yeah we have yeah. a guy, Daniel about. Pearl. He goes, they need to fight once a month so you know who the women are. Right, right. That's uh, pretty brutal. Right, right. Well, it's, I don't think it's totally that. I just think that they, Every they, other month. they just need to fight on big cards, and they're not getting right. that's what I was, Well, that's what I was saying before. I, you know, you got to find, get like a, a crossover, almost like a, uh, what's her name, the MMA? Oh, uh, Ronda? Ronda Holly Rousey Holly. type. Holly. Yeah, and, and Holly Holm, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. you start finding, you get somebody like that that will Holly's bring... amazing. Why doesn't she fight Holly Holm? That'd be a perfect fight. But you know what? I, mean, I don't know that uh, Clarissa would beat Holly Holm, even though Holly only fought... I mean, her highest was like at 47, yeah. I think. But, well, I mean, Holly is amazing, and she proved herself all along the way. I mean, see, this is the thing. I mean, I would say in the United States, the only American female fighter that really stood up to if you guys even knew though in europe and in mexico and in a lot of other countries they've been doing women's boxing right for a long time germany's been it's killing only it. the united states that it's like the s-hole of it's like the s-hole of boxing for women here we get paid the least here they get paid a lot better in europe and in mexico and some of the other countries and then not only that the competition's awful we don't i mean we barely get treated like real fighters you know what yeah. i'm saying but I mean, we can't really perform like real fighters either because they're not willing to spend the money for good fights, you know what I'm no. saying? So, I mean, 
Look, look at Katie Taylor was on the um, Anthony Joshua Klitschko undercard at Wimbledon, and they said that she was the second largest cheering section under that fight. And only made, I mean, she, and only made twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I mean that's the thing. Look at where Argentina Clarissa's fighting. She's at, you know, she's at uh, where was that Casino Turning Stone Turning or something Stone, yeah. like that. You know, I mean, I mean, not to say anything bad about Turning Stone, but it doesn't compare to Wimbledon. No. You know what I'm saying? And so, and not only that, but the competition's not as good. She's, you know, she's fighting. I mean, Tori's a, a great fighter, and she's plus she's got a great sport. You know, she's she's sticking it in there. And I fought when I was in my 40s too. So yeah. Well, that was only like yesterday, though. <laughs> it's all, it was only a month or so ago. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so, you know, but, but you know, they're just not giving them a, a shot. You know, to get up there and prove themselves and not, you know, being treated or paid like real fighters. I mean, man, it's not even one percent of what the guys make. So you know. No, but you I know. Mean, it's, it's, it's just too conservative here, I think, when it comes to boxing. Too many men that just don't like it. You know? well, we were talking about crossover women stars, and I think we do have one. She has one of the best trainers in the world. She's she's a knockout, and she can fight. Michaela uh, Mayer. I didn't know Michaela did other sports. I mean, I, I've met her, too. Yeah, Michaela, she's a knockout. She was a model. Yeah. But I don't think she's done anything besides boxing. I didn't know she did kickboxing no, she, or anything she, like that. Um, and then she's coached by... Um, um, from Marquette, the Olympic coach. Oh, Al Mitchell. Al Mitchell. She's coached by Al Mitchell. Yeah, we just seen her. Yeah, we just seen her. And she just got signed by Bob Aaron. We saw her in New York, you know, and um, and I just think that she has that it factor. She yeah. Well, her and Katie Taylor should fight, and they have. I think they have fought. Like lava. Yeah. See, that would be a good fight for you. You know, Katie wants to come over here. So Keller trying to get beat by Michaela Mayer. Like, where's the coach should come home? Where's my dinner at? Oh, shit. Right. Right here, man. Beat me. <laughs> Beat me. <laughs> right. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure that those two are fun. I haven't even looked it up, but I'm sure that they're fun. Cyborg. Yeah, Jeremy Cyborg is a beast, but she might have a penis. Oh. <laughs> Cyborg. I did not say that. It's 2018, dude. I don't give a fuck. What's Cyborg going to do? Beat me up? I hope. I hope. They, they, hey, can I get a picture of the green screen real quick? Sure. Hey, sure. Justin, turn turn, turn turn your thing around so I get a picture of the green screen real quick. <laughs> Hurry up. I got close up. Oh, I, I need the punchline real quick. Hold on, Terry. Oh, I got to see the, the bottom of the punchline. Get out the way, James. Where's it saying my name at? Just blocking him out, blocking the Kelly out. <laughs> <laughs> it is the James Dominguez punchline. <laughs> Kelly scared I'm going to get myself arrested for um, saying shit like this. But uh, I would be on Fox News and CNN tonight for a fucking harassment, a sexual harassment. It's not harassment. I just said she has a penis. You know what? I'm not the first to say it. Everybody in the sport says it. I'll change the subject. We got we got two questions. One's an open question for everybody. Okay. We got. Uh, we'll have Terry answer. Kalan Swanson here, and, and Kalan's a fighter, and, and he just uh, got. I'm assuming it's he. Uh, uh, just got off a of shoulder surgery though, uh, and he's, he's trying to make a comeback. He just wants to know if, if any of you guys, or if you know anybody that's had s- shoulder surgery and made a comeback afterwards. Yeah, Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao. Okay. Yep. Uh, and he fought Floyd Mayweather right after. Right, Terry. Do you know anybody who's had a uh, pretty big shoulder surgery and, and came right back? Berto. Berto did. Berto. Is Terry still on? Terry you go. Your phone died. Your phone died. Oh. Yeah, she just kept it on the charger. We had to take it off for a second. Here, use this one. It's going to take a while for the charger to load back up now. You got her number? Yeah, I do. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Oops. That's because I'd be on my phone all day. Come in here with your phone at 3%. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> like you're popular or something. Is your, is that, your, your charger on charge fast. Uh, it's on your phone. It's online. Tell, uh, tell what's her name, uh, Amy, to text you real quick. Amy, um, if you're on there, send me uh, Terry's number again. We lost her. Kelly's phone died. But, yeah, um, there's some questions anyway on there, guys. Uh, there's some really good questions. There was a question by somebody saying, is it true the rumor that Mikey wanted to quit in his fight against him? Um, yeah, I've seen that. No, it's not true. Mikey wasn't going to quit. In a fight that he was in charge of from the whole time, and he nearly tore the guy's fucking ear off. You know what I mean? <laughs> Where do they get the uh, rumors? Rumors. Um, Mikey is the first guy I'm gonna tell you. We're not just saying it because he's homie and we're friends. 
Mikey, don't. Mikey is not a quitter, man. He's not going to be someone. And then he's going to he's taking Lipinets because of that. Well, that's on him. I would agree, but then we'd both be wrong. We are looking for a number. Who's big, whose penis is bigger, Holmes or Cyborg's? Depends on if it's cold outside. Oh, cyborg's penis. Cyborg's hey, penis is huge. Hey, Amy, Amy cyborg. Cyborg literally has like a, a, a foot long clit. Cyborg dick. Cyborg's dick has a dick on it bigger than your dick. Dude, it's like like alien. Like the one that Dude. Comes, the little thing comes out. Yeah. Like, Another <laughs> Cyborg's dick has a dick and, it's, and his dick's dick's bigger than your dick. You know what I mean? Alien. Bro. Cyborg was getting a blowjob in Tennessee, and the chick was in Kentucky. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, my phone's turning back on anyways. Hold on. I got it. Let me see what Amy said. She's mad. 678? Oh, I'll just call it. The YouTube viewers appreciate you guys answering the questions. Give a lot of thanks. Oh, tell them. So thanks for, uh, all for the YouTube guys. Thanks for Hi. asking the questions. All right, you're back on the air. Uh, Kelly's phone died, so we have to switch to my phone, Terry. Oh, okay, no worries. I'll be on my phone. You had I stay on my phone. There was a question. Have you ever seen a fighter have... Sh 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 you were asked a question about a fighter having shoulder surgery and coming back from that. How often have you seen that happen? It depends on what kind of surgery. I mean, you've probably seen more of that, Kelly. <laughs> Yeah, both you guys actually. But no. yeah, I mean, it depends on what kind of. Surgery. I'm in the amateurs. If we have shoulder surgery, we called it a career and played baseball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah if, it, if, it, if it pops out the socket, you got a problem because that's that's gonna be like if your shoulder gets dislocated, it's probably gonna, you know, once it's bad two or three times, and it's probably over for you. Yeah. So, I mean, rotator cuff and stuff, they, they can fix it. It just takes so long to heal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it all depends, and it depends on. I think it don't depend on the fighter. I think it depends on how good your doctor was, that whoever you had to do the surgery. Right. So. Yeah. Honestly, I just tore my rotator cuff about a year ago, and so I. But I tried to do this stuff called prolotherapy, where you do like stem cell injections instead of surgery. Yeah. And it healed all up, and then it was just so inflamed they had to put steroids in it to, to calm down the inflammation, and then I tore my bicep. <laughs> Wow. I mean, the steroids, call, yeah, just tore right off power. You can't fix those. So now I've got like a big Popeye knot on one of my arms. It looks pretty cool, yeah. though. Ask the questions. Terry, we got a couple. Oh, okay. Um, we got a couple YouTube questions for you. Okay. As soon as my phone is uh, taking some time, it just came back on. No worries. Yeah, one second here. Kelly's the only guy in the world has more money than God and, and won't update his phone. Uh. <laughs> I, dude, that's not my concern. He's still he's still using an iPhone four. It's an iPhone oh. six. <laughs> what four years? All right, here's one question. It says, "What do you think of Clarissa Shields, and what does she think of Cecilia Bracos?" Cecilia Bracos. Uh huh. Who? What, what do I think Bracus. about Cecilia? What do you think about Clarissa Shields? I mean, I like Clarissa. I think she's looking better. I mean, we put it this way. In the answer, she looks really good. I think she just, uh, you know, one thing that's bad about putting fighters on the national team is they leave the trainer that they have. Yeah. They go off to Colorado Springs and be trained by whoever, whatever level co four coach that gets signed up and does all the classes. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, and I talked to these girls about it. I was like, how do you guys, like, leave your own trainers and come up here and train with these people? Because while I was – having the teams like the Chinese team and the American team in my gym for nine days watching them train. Yeah. I was like, how do you, you know, some of the stuff I saw was ridiculous, you know, but they said, ah, oh, you just take it with a grain of salt. And I think that that's a habit that gets instilled in those, uh, especially if they stay on the national teams too long. I mean, I think that it causes them not to listen. You know what I'm saying? Not to, I mean, they become the, the trainer. They, they pick and choose what they want to hear. So, I mean, I think that probably there's going to be a transition for Clarissa to go back to her roots yeah, you know, on on deal, you know, letting her trainer be the be the guy that calls the shots, but which is probably why she had she didn't look as good to me in the pros as she did in the amateurs. You know what I'm saying? No. And she's starting to look a little better now, but still, I mean, basically, like when I watched this last fight with Tori, what I saw was she's you know she likes to be flat footed and dig and throw those heavy shots, but she's not picking them, placing them. You know, they're just going where you know she's she's just throwing dynamite, but it's not 
a lot of rhyme or reason behind it. But sometimes there is. It's not but right. she's way better than that. Like, she can do way better than that. I think it's just getting her to a place where she can learn again and, you know, trust the advice of her, her, her coaches. I think that's a guy that's been with her for a long time. I mean, he got her where she's at. So now, you know, she needs to kind of go back to that route and realize that, you know, it's like starting all over. It's not, you don't pick up where you left off in the amateurs and you're still at the top of the game. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, so I I think she's got to untrain a lot of that stuff they pick up there in camp, you know, in Colorado Springs. That's my opinion. But What I notice with her, she does have power and she does have speed. What she has problems with is shot placement. She hasn't learned that profile shot placement. She's still not in the amateur stage yeah. where she's going to hit you where she can score and not hit you with a shot that's going to put you away. Right, exactly. And that's the thing is I don't see – I didn't see any of that. I mean, she could have, you know, dropped Tori a few times. But Tori fought really hard. But, I mean, really that fight wasn't the level that she shouldn't have just finished her off. But see, what Clarissa is used to is just charging through and being, you know, uh, you know, the T-Rex. But what she needs to do now is be more like somebody that can pick a shot, counter a shot – you know, not just barrel through them, but, you know, get in there and fight with, you read that with purpose, you know? Not at it. All right, yeah. Tara, uh, yeah. we've got another question. Have you heard of a be- of the beautiful brawlers fight card out of the Bay Area? I know who the people are. You know, I've talked to them. It's been years ago. They started that quite a while ago. But I don't really know about the fight card. Um, yeah. I mean, it used to be an amateur show. I don't know. Maybe now they're doing pros. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I've never heard of them. We're kind of ignorant Actually, to I think that I talked to Janice Rico about that one time. That was Is he related to you, James? Oh, oh. Champ Ross. Yeah, Champ. No, that? We, uh, that was the guy, Champ Ross, off YouTube. And, uh, yeah, we, we never really heard of it either, so. Yeah, I mean, I've heard of it. It used to be an amateur show. I don't know. Maybe they've... I mean, it's been a, they've been running that show for quite a while, but yeah, I do. I, like I said, I, I, I talked to Denise Rico about it a long time ago, and there's actually a woman that runs that program. So Who did you say it was, show. Denise or Delilah? Oh, it's Nick Delilah. That's, that's a relative, right? That's, yeah. i got to answer Delilah, one question. That's her. Yeah. I've talked to her quite a few times. That's it? Mama. Mama D. Get out, Mama Hello. D. That's what I'm going to call her next Hello, time. Hello, fellow <laughs> haters. All right, i got a question from Hello, Fellow Haters. Um, it's for me, actually. I'm sorry, Terry. How? <laughs> says, Who's the biggest dick Kelly ever sucked? Negative. <laughs> oh, that's not the Who's the hardest puncher you ever faced and the trickiest hitter? Uh, real quick, it was Edison Miranda was the hardest. And I, I'd have to say Bernard Hopkins because he's, the way he threw his punches, um, he wasn't a heavy puncher, but he caught you when you really weren't expecting it, which makes any punch hard. It's like a sucker punch, but not. Yeah, I read it. I read, I read, I read uh, a thing by Antoine Eccles. He was talking about Bernard Hopkins. Tell me if, if you experienced this. He said that when Bernard Hopkins would throw a punch, it would change midair and it would change levels midair. Of the punch. Yeah, would. he comes in. He brings the. He comes down with the head on with the right hand and, and comes like that. But then at the last second, raises back up and drops it down. Yeah, that's what he was saying. It was hard trouble. He thought he was expecting a punch to the chin, and he he said that all of a sudden he would get a punch, you know, to the throat. Or, yeah. Yeah, he changes it up. Um, well. And, yeah. Let me go over here and ch- check this out real quick. Yeah, right James got to go take care of his dog. All right. Hey, Kelly, well, I'm actually, I got a probably, I've been here and trained this class, and you know, I've got a bunch of trainers in here waiting for me. Um, but and any other questions you can think about about the women's body? Not that that's all I deal with, though. So, uh, you know, in case somebody doesn't know, I'm in Atlanta. i got a lot of male fighters here that I train that are um, mostly Latino. Yeah. <laughs> mostly all of them. I think they're all related to James. Yeah, they might be. They might be. So, <laughs> um, Well, we are going to let you go because we're actually getting ready to wrap up here in a minute. But, Terry, thank you for, for coming on, and we would love to have you back on again here shortly. I would love to come on. Thank you so much for having me, Kelly. Yeah. so good to talk to you guys. Thank and, you. And keep us up to date on what's going on on the uh, Atlanta scene. I will for sure. Yeah, you'll have to have me back once we make our big announcement. Well, <laughs> remember, I ain't coming back until you tell the Hooter girls what's up. I will. <laughs> I'll be sure to let them know. They're going to be looking know. for you, James. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll see you All soon. right. Well, you guys take care. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Sorry, guys. My dog got loose. I had to rain. I had to rain her in a little bit and bring her back. Well, well. Hey, 
Can we get Charlie Z one last call? Well, we can do that. And also, they want to talk about. Uh, they, I've been hearing a lot about Brandon Rios and Danny Garcia. Yeah. And people running Brandon Rios into the ground. I don't know where the fuck these people get that from. That this is going to be an easy fight. I don't see it. How they think Danny Garcia is so fucking great, he's going to just run over Brandon Rios. I don't see it either. I, I really don't. But the only thing that I I may be able to say is with Brandon. We don't know what's in a t- what what he has in the tank still though. Yeah, but but I mean, what I'm saying based on um, the power he has and the inside fighting, which Danny Garcia is atrocious at inside fighting, he might have his work cut out for him there. Exactly. I mean, four years ago, I say you guys are fucking crazy. I, I would have took Brandon Rios. Um, you, you're not gonna go over. You're not gonna go over there and walk over Brandon Rios. No. It, it ain't gonna happen. Um, I'm not saying you know, Brandon as, as a as a. As a Danny Garcia type fighter, yeah, is what I'm what I'm trying to say. As it, I gotta watch how I say that because we'll get the people on there. You're fucking crazy. I don't um, fucking care what they say. I know because you have to really break it down to these douche pickles. But um, yeah, but as a Danny Garcia type fighter, that's all right. We're gonna try Charlie Z one more time. Keep your fingers yeah. crossed. Jeremy, I've been trying to do stand up. Frank, Frank Jenkins says you, you can't stand toe to toe with him. Who said that? Frank Jenkins Johnson. He has like six names. Hey, you didn't get a voicemail? That phone might be all screwed up. James, I put it out of its misery pretty good when he got up. Here. No, it wasn't ringing. Just went straight to the thing. It says, um, somebody, she's well spoken and not from Flint. Okay. Th- thanks, Amy. Thanks. Thanks for working with the show. We appreciate it. <laughs> Arguing with what we say. <laughs> um, Mark, you said we're funny. That's good. Well, some of us are. Frank John said you can't go toe to toe with him, Kelly. What? Danny got a handle on Stephen Kennedy. Said maybe, maybe not. But uh, I don't know when Danny became world beater overnight. You know what I mean? That's he what I'm saying. I don't. He know. got a gift against Herrera. How many gifts has he had already? Three or four? Yeah, I don't. I don't get it. We're into the answering questions part now. Yeah, we're at the answering questions. Danny getting too caught up in Daddy's talk game. That's right, David. I mean, Angel comes in all up on that Peruvian nose powder talking shit. Everybody falls for what he's saying. Peruvian marching powder. Peruvian. Oh, the booger sugar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get, uh-huh. And yes, she is from Flint, Michigan. Um, um, she's from Flint. I may have got the block from Charlie Z. Frank said you better drink your water before he slaps the life out of you. (laughs) Drink your water before he slaps the life out of you. I should have got that life water. Charlie, guys. Charlie is scared of you. He does not want to fight. He keeps fucking ducking the phone call, guys. No, no, this son of a bitch is going to call me ten times tonight. You got Charlie's dad's number in Eugene. Somebody wants you to try his dad. It's three hey, two, Kelly. I got the number. Call dad. It's three, two, three. You want me to do it? Or Kelly has his phone. Yeah, you do it from yours, though. What? Yeah, because I'm going to answer this. How do you think a fight with Calzaghe would have gone? I want, I wanted that so bad. Then Kelly was my it? favorite fighter, and I hate Calzaghe. What is it? So picture perfect. Um, three, two, three. Hold on one second. Eight, five, one. Okay. Seven one four eight. Okay. His name's Eugene. Eugene. We'll, we'll, we'll do it. Sure. Um, Kelzagi, I would have loved that fight. Um, you, you know what? In my opinion, Kelzagi was a hell of a fighter. Um, yeah, I don't give a shit what anybody says. The guy beat everybody. Um, he was awkward. He could fight. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I would love it though. It was a test. I like fighting anybody and everybody that I, I could go. Again, I jumped up two weight classes to fight Hopkins, and, and then came back down two weight classes, back to middleweight to fight Rubio. I think it would have been a great fight. Uh, Calzaghe was was a legitimate great fighter. Uh, there was hands down, nobody could argue that. But uh, 
Thanks, though. Who, who was that question from? Uh, that was from Kalan Swanson. Kalan Swanson. Thanks for the question, too. Uh, and thanks for being a fan, man. I appreciate it, too. Yes, thank you. This is Eugene, uh, Charlie Z's dad. Maybe you can find Eugene out. Zelenoff. Let's see the dad. It has, it has more balls. He may think it's a bill collector, though. Probably one of Charlie's or Charlie's probation officer. You should leave a message for him. No, because maybe it's not. We're getting this off fucking YouTube. That's even more hilarious. This may be a Are fucking for... FBI agent or something. Are they calling for the free couch? It's the kitty porn hotline. <laughs> How do I get back on the couch line? Hi, every day, I'm PM Electric. Please leave me your name and message, and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Have a good day. Hey, my friend. Huh? Hey, my friend. I was looking for Charlie Zelenov. If you haven't called me back, thank you very much, my friend. All right, guys. While we try to get a hold of his dad, I'll tell you what we're gonna do though. For all, the, for everybody as a gift, Merry fucking Christmas. I'm gonna post Charlie Z's address for all you tough guys that we're gonna beat him up this week. That all want, well, they all want chances with him, right? Let me let me pull this up and I'm gonna give it to Justin so he can post it for me. So let's talk about this um, Brandon Rios, Danny Garcia thing, Kelly. Yeah, I I, I think that. I got. Uh, I mean, it's a good fight. I don't know who's going to win. Um, I truly don't. Lonnie has a question for you. Yeah. He said, "Who in boxing do you most com- are you most comparative to?" Tommy Hearns. Oh, I can see that. Except that's, that's what everybody said. You had a better chin. Yeah, once because my height and one sixty. Ah, yeah. But... Where's the other charger? It's, it's, um, okay. it's right there. Yeah. Uh, that that him. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know who else you could compare me to. Or who I've been compared to. That was it. And I think mainly that was compared because of uh, being skinny and tall for for our weight classes. Tommy or yeah, Tommy Hearns is really tall for Walter weight. Um, how do you guys get? How do we get into the? Um, you know our messenger. How do we get into that? You know, like the show messenger. Uh, you might have to use the pages app now. They got too many. It's easier to do it on the desktop. Now, I was into it on my show. I, on this, I just didn't know. Yeah, they changed some things on the app. You used to be able to get it through the app, now they want you to download the damn pages in. Okay. A bunch of bullshit. You got any questions on yours, Kelly? Lonnie T, uh, uh, TK says you're a throwback. You know that. That's it, Lonnie, Lonnie Atkins is my powerlifting coach, and my one of my best friends for sure, and uh, he's an awesome <laughs> dude and. He's a boxing historian himself. I mean, that guy knows. He does know his boxing. He follows it like crazy. So. That's what I. That's what. That's what I've been told. Why are you calling me, Walter? I didn't mean to. I didn't. Um, wow, that's crazy. Twenty packs of chewing top bet. I got Danny. You got in a fight. I'm not saying that Brandon Rios, Ricardo. I'm not saying Brandon Rios is going to win the fight. I'm just saying Dan, people were saying Danny Garcia is going to. Walk through him. Yes, uh, we're not saying that. We're, we have said Danny Garcia is not going to go in there and just beat him down. It's not going to happen like that. I got another question. Um, Kelly, do you think Miguel Espino was a strong fighter or do you think he really was drained day of fights? <laughs> um, so you're leaving me an option of that he was um, not himself when I fought him. Uh, you know, I got respect for Miguel Espino. He's, uh, he came to fight and... Um, I don't know the situation for that fight or what was going on, but um, you know I, I know it was only six rounds or I think six rounds it went. It was the fight in Youngstown, one after uh, Rubio, but uh, he, he came to fight. He did. That was a uh... yeah. Ricardo says, "Oh, okay, yeah, well, yeah." That, that's what we're saying on on that fight. What, what me and James were saying is that people were kind of already putting it in as like Danny's gonna is gonna be a walk in the park for it's a first round knockout. <clears throat> See, what the fuck Google says, the, you guys are talking about the videos from a few years ago, and that guy isn't around anymore. 
Yeah. But he's still he's still a, a balls to the wall type fighter that, that still got skills. And that Brandon has trouble with guys on the inside, and he's been known to always have trouble. Herrera beat the shit on Adam on the inside. Herrera can't pop an egg. Yeah, McGuire was a nice guy. Um, this guy says, "Why Mike Garcia turned on fighting Omar Figueroa?" Omar Figueroa couldn't make weight, guys. Uh, Omar Figueroa was two hundred and two pounds, and he couldn't make. He couldn't get down to one thirty five. It was not about that. It's about for Figueroa couldn't make the weight by February. And it, see, a lot of times what happens is it's going to come. It come with with being the A fighter. You're going to get a lot of the praise from being an A fighter, but you're also held responsible for when a fight doesn't happen because you are an A fighter. And let let's just let's just put it out there now. Rock Figueroa. Didn't, couldn't make weight for the fight. He was out of shape. He wasn't ready to fight. Still not. Um, he looked like shit against... Uh, we got an argument here, though, real quick with uh, Lonnie Atkins. Okay. It says, Garcia will never face... Will never have a major title again. Rios is way past his prime and still has a chance. What? Mikey... Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. Lonnie said that. Danny... Danny won't have another title? I'm Danny confused. Garcia? Yeah, is that Danny Garcia? Yeah, Danny Garcia. Yeah, that's who he's talking. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Danny, Danny. Yeah, and that's not out of the question either, Lonnie. It truly ain't. Um, Danny's a game fighter also, but he, he's in, unfortunately, he's in a weight class right now at 147. I don't see him getting the title. I don't see Brandon getting a title in that weight class. But no. just, these are these are your these are your C level guys at this at this because you guys got fucking Errol Spence out there and you got Brooke and you've and, it, and you got you got um the crazy one in India right now right elephants around fuck um yeah you got his ass Thurman and, the, and you Porter. got Thurman and Porter it goes on and on yeah and you know what Rio does still have a chance Lonnie and I I got the question now yeah Rio still has a chance that's what it is exactly what we're saying it's you calling me I have my phone dude I, I told you I think it shit to bed on that fall sorry I got a guy here that says if you call Eugene again I'll pick up I don't know if he's back or not nah we're done with that. <laughs> We got a new listener from the UK. We've got uh, Keith Hines. Hi, Keith. He's from the UK watching it. He says that uh, he thinks Garcia will win, but he, he would like Rios to win. Let me tell you like one thing about Brandon. He's a great fucking guy. He's a nice guy. He's uh, he now, just see Lonnie's coming with some knowledge. Sorry to interrupt. And he says Mikey is number two or three on his pound for pound list. I can see it. I do. Why not? Would I say two? No. Let me hit you with some knowledge. A three? Good question, Tim Kell. Uh, who who's your Who's either your favorite fighter or the fighter that you admire, have admired the most? You know, I'm going to say God. He has he, that was just from being a kid watching Sugar Ray Leonard was a guy who I wanted to fight like, but unfortunately, God didn't give you that. Yeah, huh? you don't. You know, you just ain't handed that. Uh, I think Leonard, in my my opinion, was the pound for pound best fighter uh, of all time, in my opinion. Yeah. And I have very valid points to argue that that reason. So. I could I could see a point for that. And a guy who I didn't for a while, who right now I got to put up there, and right literally like neck to, neck and neck with uh, Leonard is Mayweather. Yeah, uh, it's not me. me. I don't know. Yeah, I I could totally see that. Why you would say that too? I mean. Yeah. So. It's uh, that's how mine goes in the pound for pound all the time. Nobody gives a fuck about mine, so. <laughs> yeah, they do actually. More you know, with, with your Crawford thing, I get you got more people agreeing with you on that. Than... Well, no, no one asked about my favorite fighter of all time because I'm gonna tell you anyway. Greatest fighter ever to me was my favorite fighter who made me want to box with Wilfred Benitez. I want to be Benitez, but God didn't bless me with that kind of skill. I want to be like Benitez and Duran. Duran could fight, man. Duran was just, he was what I wanted to be. Like when it came down to like that in the ring anger and ferociousness, he would spit on you when you were down and maybe kick you in the nutsack. You know what I mean? Uh, There's more Cole Sr. What do you think about Mayweather going to the octagon? Uh, I think it's stupid. I don't think that's not his world. You you need to stay, you need to respect that shit. Unless he's been doing undercover fucking jujitsu for like four or five, seven years. (laughs) That's the case, I'd tell him fucking hop in. Saw the way he fucking fucks McGregor. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, somebody asked me what's my all time, James. Hey, thanks, James Lee. Thanks. I'm 
I'm more than a lamppost in this motherfucker, ain't He I? said he's he a lamppost. <laughs> a lamppost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting here like fuck. He about to get ran over. <laughs> oh, uh, Carbajal is Car. There's so what about Carbajal? Carbajal is my favorite. But we're talking about what made me want to start boxing. Carbajal was like my favorite. Good you question. Know. You know, you're like on this one, Johnny Chingas. Oh, what Johnny. are your thoughts on Spence moving up to 154 and fighting Lara or Charlo? So I love me, it. Yeah, but me and James were saying. Spence isn't that fighter. He is a guy who could actually move up to 154 and uh, take over that division because of his natural size ability. And and uh, I think he would carry the pop going up to that weight class also. You did get a pity question, James. <laughs> they, they do want to know who, who is you know, who, your favorite and most admired. You, know, I know you, you got to get these YouTube guys. My favorite and most admired fighter was Wilfred Benitez. Um, when I first started watching boxing... And I and I, I didn't see it. I was too young, but I heard about him winning a title at seventeen. I I um I first about title seventeen when I re, when I became an amateur at nine. I realized it was possible for me to become a champion at seventeen. It just didn't work out that way. But him and Duran by the maybe the no Moste no, but maybe the way Duran fought and, he, and the 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 way he fought was somebody I was admired. And Michael Carbajal were all my favorites. What time was broke ass phone open till? What? What time was broke ass phone open till? They still open. Yeah, this yeah. is um, Julian Jackson, who wins? Kelly Oh, Kelly Pavlik versus Julian. Kelly Pavlik wins just on the chin alone. Uh, Julian was a guy who could give it, but he couldn't take it. You know what I mean? Nope. And I could take it. Now, you know what? That's another one. We were talking about that, Ricardo. <laughs> Actually, when the first show first started, James were throwing these fucking guys out. Yes, like, James. What if you could fight McKellum? What if you could fight Julian Jackson and fuck I said, this guy? I said Joe McClellan and fuck Kelly's like, world out. I was like, I wouldn't be fucking alive. No, but you know what? I thought that would be a fight of the century. You fighting Joe McClellan. Hell yeah. It pre was, uh, pre brain damage. Afterward, just a little bit. You taking advantage. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you called well, me again, dude. Answer it. See what happens. Maybe it's somebody just ghosting on, on his own. It's probably Charlie no, Z acting yeah. like it's Kelly's. This is how my phone the, the thing's off, man. My phone acts up like that. It's all my phone's fucked. Um, uh, but Screen no. Off. Um, I, Ricardo, I got, uh, and, uh, Sal says, uh, Chico Corral is one of my favorites. We just had Ricky Funes on, who was Ch one of Chico's trainers. We love Corrales. Thanks, Ricardo. I appreciate it. Pavlik might be too big and powerful. Jackson's better at 154, suffered serious eye injuries. And it, it's true, um, Andrew, um, Gerald beats Kelly, but he survives the fight. James Lee, I, I would be Triple G because that's the top dog at, at middleweight right now. Is Cal Burke going to be a success at 154 or has he got issues since Triple G broke one side of his face? And he should. And that motherfucker has... He should never get hurt again. He has a Terminator face. His face is all <laughs> yeah, That's true. <laughs> his whole face is fucking titanium. If he's allowed to get, if he can get through hey, the fucking airport. Do you, remember, do you remember that show Six Million Dollar Man? We made him better. Yeah. <laughs> You know, he'd be, he be hitting your ding. Uh, you know what? That motherfucker, when he comes out, Kelbrook better have you could be mine coming on from uh, Guns N' Roses when he comes out. Yeah. Dude, he wouldn't be able to get through the fucking area. They have to fight in his own town. He wouldn't be able to get through fucking customs. <laughs> customs. <laughs> Sir, you got metal. It's in my yeah. face. Liar. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you see the fight? Nope. <laughs> Pill it off. <laughs> Cybernine Systems Model 101. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Connor, come with me if you want to live. Kelly's too big for Jackson. You know what? A lot of people they said Floyd looks soft. Floyd, Floyd, Floyd was a good one thirty guys. He, you know he turned pro at one twenty eight. Yeah, he Tony Campbell out with me and Paul Williams. I would love that fight. Paul Williams was just too small. And as and when I say that, obviously he, he was my height. You know, um, just his style. He, he was there to be hit. I made the comment earlier that you guys would have set Compu box fucking records for middleweight. You and Paul Williams. Yeah. He threw two hundred punches around. You weren't too far behind. Mm -mm. No, I was every bit as many punches. I mean, I came back in the third round with Taylor in the first fight after being dropped and threw nine hundred punches. But after Sergio Martinez knocking him out that way, do you think do you think he really could have took your power? Do you know what I mean? I don't think he would have took it before that. No. If you had, if you were able to get knocked out by Martinez like that, and Martinez wasn't a big puncher. No, uh, to me, people said he, you know said he was, uh, and I and I like Martinez as a person as a fighter. Yeah, he's a, um, he's a buddy. He, he is. He, he, he's a truly fucking world class champ. But uh, he didn't hit that hard at all. Um, but uh, Bernard, I agree with Carbon Arce. Uh, James Lee wanted, did you guys see the BKB? 
You know what? I watched it when our homie uh, Pelos was fighting in it, and since he hasn't been fighting it, we haven't been keeping up with the BKB like we Travis should. Travis Ruffhouse asked a good question. Travis, if you're going to go by stats and, and top guys that were fought, I would have to put, and, I, and I'm not doing this, I am never do this, I'd have to put me, and then I'd have to say the other guy, if he had a little better management, but he was still one of the, the best fighters ever, well, not ever. I gotta watch. Oh, who was that? I would have to say Aaron Pryor. What was the, the hawk? You know what hurt Aaron Pryor? Huh? That Peruvian marching yeah, powder. Well, yeah, but I'm saying, just look what he. Uh, what was the question? Though? So the other people know the question. But they're not it was who was the best fighter um, in Ohio? Yeah, to come out of Ohio. Uh I said me, uh, but you had so many guys though, man. Fuck. Well, maybe to say the best would be you, the most talented would be Aaron Pryor. How would you would you say that? Yeah, but Aaron, yeah, Aaron Pryor, I mean, if he would have fought, like we talked about, if he would have fought the other guy from Ohio. Bro, when he fought Arguello, he was on everything. He was on every drug known yeah, to man. He, he, bro, he, he, was, he looked crazy that I mean, night. Can you imagine he? he fought the other guy from Ohio? His eye even shut down after that. You guys know what I'm saying, but I'm not going to bring it up. Oh. It would have been fucking horrible. Cunt, cunt, bum, bum. Yeah. <laughs> Is he cunt, cut, man? See, he fucking bastard. Did you say cut? Bum, cunt, bum, cut? cunt. Oh. Tyson Fury makes a full comeback to his best. To his best, does he outbox Joshua or does Joshua KO? The only way he beats Joshua is a pie eating contest. Wait a minute, who else is though? <laughs> what, uh, what's his name? That trained, who, the kid that trained Hanshaw, the guy. Uh, <coughs> oh. Breland. Was Breland. Was Breland. From Ohio? Yeah. No, Breland's from New York. Oh, he is? Yeah. All right. No. But dude, Ohio you know, put so many fucking guys dude. in too, though. Yeah. So when I say me, I'm just, and I'm kind of joking, but you, there's just so many names to throw. Ohio's a fucking huge, uh, huge on the map for boxing. Well, James, what happened with BKB is uh, Money Team had bought that, and they sold it to a company in Europe, so I don't know if it's going to make that comeback. And MMA, Ohio's got a lot of MMA guys. So what? Cool okay. Well, we got about Ezra Charles, they said, is from Ohio, which is right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Best case scenario for the best fight you see could happen in 2018. The best fight in 2018. Fuck, there, there could Spence be. Spence Crawford. Spence Crawford. Mikey Loma. Uh, you know who I say? Um, um, um. Charlo and um, Jamal Charlo and um, Canelo Alvarez at 54 would be a great fight. At 54? At 54. I don't think. Why? They're I both think, 54. I think Canelo was that easy. I don't know about easy, but I think he wins it. But um, also, what about uh, Mikey and um, Mikey and uh, Crawford would be a, a great fight at 2018. Could be the best. I think Crawford will do. But that's a, a great fight. Yeah. Hey, look, if, if Mikey's willing to fight fucking, um, uh, fucking, um, no, they're fucking Puerto Rican. Cotto at 60. I don't think he's 40, but Crawford at yeah. 47. Cotto Williams is a great, probably one of the best amateurs of all time. So, yeah, Johnny, uh, if you're going that way. I fought him in um, the amateurs, I'll tell you. Yeah, I'd say he was the best amateur probably easily to come out of, out of Ohio. Um, R- Ricardo. Unfortunately, you can't, with the pro career, you can't. Yeah. Ricardo did things in the ring that no other amateur could do. Yeah. He did. He was just a natural, gifted guy. He was well, amazing. Besides, Long Loma did some shit, too, though. Who did? Long Loma. Oh, yeah, but we're talking and, about... And I'm talking about as an American, you know what I mean? Yeah. He did things that I never... Oh, by far, easily. Ricardo, easily. Yeah. Long and you know who best. else was like that? Who was gifted, a gifted fucking amateur just pissed it away? And I'll tell you, I fought him. Panchito Bojado. Mm-hmm. I sparred with the fucking kid. The kid was a monster. And he, he was so gifted, and it's almost a shame watching that gift go away like that, that not use it, you know? Yeah. I got Wilder, Lonnie. Boom Boom Mancini is the best from Ohio. Wow. <laughs> the, the, the best at being a third-rate fighter. Yeah, he is. Um, Who did he beat? Who did Mancini ever beat? That was I'm not when he moved up. Uh, Who, no, I want to know. Who did he beat moving up? Arguello beat him up. Knocked him Rocky up. Lockridge beat him, right? No. Rock. He lost to Bramble. Brant Livingston Bramble. Come on, man. He wasn't even the best fight. He wasn't even the best at his time in this town. Harry Arroyo is better than him. That's... Hey, the man did kill me. He killed a Korean that was already half dead. Duke, let's be honest. Duke Kim was dead was dead before he even got in that ring. He he got injured in his last fight. I don't hate him. I'm not I'm not saying anything, Bernard. I did. I didn't say that. And you're right, Bernard. Uh, Panchito didn't want that work. 
But no, um, Kelly doesn't hate him. But I'm just stating, stating the fact that he's not the best from Ohio. Dude, that dude became his first fight outside of South Korea, too. Well, yeah, it was the first time. He was dead before he got in the ring. Yeah, but he never fought outside of South Korea. He was dead before he got in the ring. It was just like Jimmy Garcia and Gabriel is. Uh, Gennaro Hernandez killed Jimmy Garcia long before Gabriel is did. Gabriel is was just First of all, club. Bernard, the black bottle was Aaron Pryor. That was not anything with Boom Boom and Alexis. Yeah. Um, and uh, that, that was with, with uh, Aaron Pryor. And that fight wasn't he already got stopped. Uh, Bernard said, "I read you guys have a rivalry." No, I, I, I know I didn't have any at all. You guys didn't even fight in the same time period. Why'd there be a rivalry? No, there ain't no rivalry. Yeah, it was Ray fought at one thirty-five. <laughs> <laughs> I fought. Uh, yeah, no, Bernard, I'm not being a smart ass. I, I don't got nothing. With, nothing, nothing don't like each other. You know, I, I, but I, I do. I, I love my one of my great guys and. Well, I, from Youngstown is uh, all the champs from Youngstown. I, I respect to hell, and Harry Arroyo, I, I love. I mean, he's been one of the biggest guys. Actually, if you want to talk about my career, that was the first person I ever met. I walked yes, into the boxing gym, and I, the first person I ever met, Jack wasn't there. Jack Lowe was, you know, the trainer, um, and Harry Arroyo was jump roping. And my mom told me when I left, and that was like the biggest thing. And I constantly followed Harry Arroyo. Bernard, what you have to understand is this. When you're in Youngstown, there's always going to be some kind of drama. They start drama where there is none. If there's no drama, there's no drama. But they're always going to say something here. But, yep. hey, guys. Um, well, I think we're about limit. You have an appointment today. People want to know your thoughts on Spadafora. Oh. Love Spaddy. Spaddy's my man. I worked with Paul Spadafora for three years as a sparring partner. And um, I'm... I Another one, probably one of the better defensive fighters that ever, they, they, ever. they get the credit for, and rightfully so. I mean, because he didn't have the resume, the resume, you know, of guys to fight, but that wasn't his fault either. Who, no one lined up to fight that guy. Paul would, Paul, Paul would put a circle in the ring and never leave that circle. Michael Dokes, another one lining he threw out there. What about um, the heavy hand, hand kid from the 70s that knocked everybody out? Um, the one, um, Ernie uh, Shavers. Oh, yeah. From Akron. Yeah. This one's kind of out there, but uh, do you guys know of any fighters that have ever uh, fought with a seizure disorder? Um, guy, he's, he just developed one, but he wants to get back in the ring and he's having trouble doing it. Um, you know what? It depends on your local commission. Your yeah. commission has to make that decision. And doctor. And doctor, yeah. It depends what it's for. But um, somebody said, Bernard said that Spadafor ran like hell for Manfredi. I didn't see that happen. I saw. I got. I got him ready for Manfredi. I got him ready for that fight. Boxing lesson. He beat Manfredi. He beat the brakes off Manfredi. That's why Manfredi talks to God still. All right. Well, we're gonna wrap this up, Uh, guys. I'd like to thank everybody, Lonnie. Thanks for being a big part today, too, homie. Yeah, thank you, Uh, Lonnie. Yeah, a lot of uh, Billy Lau for coming on. Terry Moss for sharing. Uh, Rick, Ricky Funes. Ricky Funes. Uh, Roger Romo. Yep, Roger Romo. Marquez. Raul. Yep. Juan Manuel. Oh, yeah, Juan. Juan, Juan, Juan Manuel. Marquez in the oh, gym. Uh, Raul. Uh, I can't I got to work on my Spanish. I speak Spanish like a hillbilly. Juan Manuel uh, Marquez. No, yeah. you're pretty good. It's fucking good. Yeah, thank you. Don't, don't fucking sell yourself short. You but, did good. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, Stay tuned. We'll be back next week. What's our next show? Next week. Is it Tuesday? Because I don't think yes. it is. No, we have something else. You had something going on Tuesday. I think it's a Thursday show, right? Or Friday? Gotta let me know shit. Well, we haven't decided yet. That's why. Okay. Oh, you're one to talk about letting us know shit. <laughs> <laughs> Mister, we had to send out a fucking search team. We had to send out fucking. We had to send out two sharks and the Coast Guard and the SEAL Team Six to find him. Yep. When I'm down, I'm down. Oh, Dave Bobby shows up. Thanks, Kelly and James. Oh, yeah, Bobby, we got some. We got to talk tonight. Thank, thanks you, motherfucker. We got to talk tonight, Bobby. You fucked us. Oh shit, Bobby did call me twice too. I gotta, I, I will call you back, Bobby. It does say CCP. Oh, you know what? I didn't get that one. Um, I didn't get that CCCP shirt, John. They went. They don't have it anymore. But I got this years ago. All right, guys. We'll be back. We'll keep you all posted on. Times, dates, and everything's in-betweens. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.